Call of Duty is known for the attachment grind. When you first start out, you're using completely naked guns. They usually don't have the best performance, but as you level them up, you get access to modifiers. You get to boost stats, make the gun perform more in line with your playstyle. With that being said, there have been a lot of attachments throughout COD history that were not worth using at all. They were a waste of your time. What's up, everybody? Chaos here today. We're going to revive the age-old topic. What attachments in COD history were the most useless? Now you let me know which of these you use the least amount of times, assuming you even remember them, drop a like. And before we get into it, if you didn't know, I am working on opening an actual real life comic collectible toy video game store. I need you guys to do me a favor. We're giving away a PS5 at 30,000 followers over on the Chaos Comics Twitter. All you have to do is go over there and follow and let me know that you came uh, from the main channel. We're going to give away a PS5 to this channel, somebody that follows from the main channel. The link is at the top of the description. I hope to see you guys over there. At number 10, Scramblers and Ghosts. I bet, I, I really honestly bet you forgot about it. I bet you didn't even remember this thing existed. I mentioned it in a video that the Scrambler perk for Modern Warfare 2 is the worst perk in that game because it would paint a target on your head before your enemy even saw you coming. Now, shocker, surprise, surprise, Scrambler and Ghost, it had the exact same problem, except this time, it was an attachment. The Scrambler attachment was only available on the Riot Shield for some reason. It would mess with your enemy's minimap when they got within a certain distance of you. Now, it wasn't quite as dramatic as the Modern Warfare 2 version, but it was still easily noticeable. And if you saw the effect happening on your radar, you simply started looking around for whoever was using the attachment over their big, bulky Riot Shield. Did anybody use it? No. Did you remember it existed? Don't lie, probably not, because until I started researching this video, guess what? I completely forgot it myself. Next up, the burst firing COD Ghost. Now, COD Ghost has a very, very fast time to kill for a Call of Duty game. We know that. Most people who played it remember frequently getting killed with two to three bullets in most situations, making for an extremely tense multiplayer. Yeah. Now, let me ask you an important question. In a game where full auto weapons can kill in two to three shots most of the time, why would you ever convert your gun to a three round burst? Burst Fire was an attachment available for most of the ARs in Ghost that would convert them into a three round weapon instead of a fully automatic, but since the time to kill was so fast across the board, it was pointless. It was. Why would they reduce their fire rate and get more precise with every gun when you could just melt people by default? Burst Fire was very, it was rarely seen in, in any online match in COD Ghost, and I'm honestly shocked it was never buffed in order to get more field usage. Infiwar did their best to keep Ghost relatively balanced, but they never felt the need to adjust this attachment. At number eight, Rapid Fire in Black Ops 2. It's always fun speeding up your fire rate, especially when it makes your weapon into a complete bullet hose, but despite appearing in a number of COD games to varying degrees of success, I think the BO2 version was probably the least used. It was, due to the hefty increasing recoil. Other versions of Rapid Fire, like Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 1, they had some juicy fire rate boosts with relatively little increases to your recoil, but when Treyarch was gearing up for Black Ops 2, well, they toned it down. On submachine guns, the Black Ops 2 Rapid Fire Attachment will crank up your fire rate by 51%, which is insane, but it also decreases your range by 60%, which is even more insane, and it increased your hip fire spread by 30%. Yeah, your recoil's through the roof. Now on LMGs, it wasn't much better. Yes, you got a 33% increase in fire rate, but you were also stuck with a 40% range nerf, a 20% hip fire nerf, and a noticeable jump in the recoil pattern. Put simply, rapid fire in Black Ops 2 bleh, wasn't the best. Yeah, you could kill faster at close range with it, but if you were at mid range or further, it puts you at a massive disadvantage, either because of the increased recoil or the decreased range or both. But since we're on the topic, Rapid Fire in Black Ops 3 and COD World War 2. Let's couple them together. Throughout COD history, Rapid Fire has it's had a pretty noticeable impact on fire rate. Obviously, the exact buff differed from weapon to weapon, but it was usually somewhere between 20 and 40%. However, Black Ops 3 and COD World War 2, they went in the complete opposite direction with their versions of the attachment. They gave players some of the smallest fire rate boost I've ever seen from a weapon modification out there. In Black Ops 3... It was a pathetic 6.38 fire rate boost when you used rapid fire, which was so tiny, it was so in insignificant that it made the attachment useless in most situations. Now, semi-auto weapons like the Shiva and the M14 and some burst weapons like the P06 and XR2, they got bigger buffs from rapid fire, but most of the weapons in the game, 6%. Then Sledge decided to give rapid fire a crack in COD World War II and somehow made the bonus even smaller. Rifles and SMGs. Once again, 6.38 fire rate boost percent. Don't know who came up with that percentage, but snipers got an even lower boost, such as the lever action in the car, 
LMGs and shoddies were treated a little nicer in the game, but Black Ops 3 and COD World War 2, their rapid fire bonuses were pretty awful. At number six, the underbarrel shotgun in Modern Warfare 2 from 2009. Now, before you dislike this video, let's take a trip down memory lane together. In 2009, you were playing Modern Warfare 2, you're eating Doritos, drinking Mountain Dew, and you finally leveled up your AK-47 to get the underbarrel shotgun. You throw it on, you try it out, and then you immediately take it back off. Because, <laughs> why? The underbarrel shotgun was a pretty popular choice in Modern Warfare 3, had a bit of a following in Black Ops 1, but a lot of people seem to forget how useless it was in Modern Warfare 2. The damage was super low, the range was high for some reason, meaning you could constantly get hit markers, and since the accuracy was so poor, one-shot kills were actually more rare than you would have thought. Plus, shotguns were secondaries in the original Modern Warfare 2. Why would you use an attachment slot to bring a lackluster shotgun when you could just shove the Spaz 12 or Model 1887 in your back pocket? The Modern Warfare 2 underbarrel shoddy was crap, and it was rendered completely useless by the entire shotgun secondary category. Now we get to the top five. Grip on shotguns in COD 4, specifically. I've done quite a bit of complaining about how useless the shotties in COD 4 were. Despite being really good weapons on paper, the map design just did not allow shotgun players to thrive. It didn't. And then on top of that, one of the attachments available in the shotgun class was borderline useless. Shotguns in COD 4 had two attachments, those being the red dot sight and the grip. We can argue whether or not the red dot was useful on them, but most COD players will agree that the grip was pointless. When you used it, your recoil would be reduced pretty drastically, but since these weapons were already pretty slow firing, that didn't really mean anything. Now, contrary to popular belief, the COD 4 shotgun grip did not reduce your hit fire spread, so really all it did was reduce your recoil, which is pretty pointless when the gun already fired so slowly it was intended to kill with a single pull of the trigger. It's like that one sniper attachment in COD Ghost that reduced recoil, but only on bolt action rifles. I mean, seriously, what's the point? Speaking of snipers, the sniper scope on assault rifles in Modern Warfare 2019 in Warzone. I applaud Infinity Ward for letting us go crazy in the gunsmith. We got to make guns that felt completely unique. There's definitely a handful of attachments that probably didn't be there though. Case in point, sniper scope on ARs. Just about every AR in the game can be equipped with a standard sniper scope or variable zoom sniper scope, and both of them make the weapons extremely difficult to use. Now, the scope alone severely slows down the ADS animation, meaning they practically had to be used at long range. Sounds pretty obvious, right? Well, of course, the sniper scope has to be used at long range, right? Well, that's actually where the problem is. The AR rifle class, by default, required a number of barrel and muzzle attachments to be competitive at long range, and those would further slow down your ADS and movement speeds. If you want to use a sniper scope on an AR, you can. You also have to use range extending attachments. You have to use heavy grips to steady the recoil and all those factors put together for a very painfully slow weapon that was virtually useless at close to mid range and still completely outclassed by your standard sniper rifle or LMG. So why? If you're someone who likes to play on huge maps and full auto spray people from a distance, you're better off using an LNG because an AR with a sniper scope comes with so many downsides that it basically renders itself obsolete. So yes, I appreciate Infinity Ward going crazy with attachments, but I'm pretty sure nobody used sniper scopes on ARs for more than one match, or if you were just trolling. At number three, shotgun slugs in Modern Warfare 2019. Now, now slug shotguns are sick, okay? It's sweet to be able to swap out your buckshot shells for one big thick slug that can tear through an enemy with a single shot from mid-range. The Black Ops 2 KSG, obviously the most famous slug shotgun in COD history, but when slugs return in Modern Warfare, the community quickly realized how hard they'd been nerfed. Now, like Black Ops 2 shotgun slugs were converted, your, they converted your buckshot into a single projectile, but that projectile unfortunately came with rather slow travel time and extremely inconsistent damage. Now, the reason people love the KSG was because of that consistent one-shot kill pretty much every time you hit somebody with it, but the Modern Warfare 2019 slugs, they were not that. It was to the point where there was no real reason to use them over standard buckshot ammo. Slugs could have been an awesome addition to Modern Warfare, but unfortunately, most people were too busy spraying Dragon's Breath rounds instead. I don't blame them. I don't like it, but I don't blame them. At number two, the foregrip in Black Ops 2. Now, believe it or not, the foregrip in the game was actually borderline pointless. Any kind of benefit you thought you were getting was basically a placebo effect. Let me explain. You may be typing an angry comment at me right now, but I'm sorry, it's the truth. The Black Ops 2 foregrip was available on most of the guns in the game, but the statistical effects were minimal. On SMGs, you got a 1.5 kick reduction, and on everything else, it was 2%. So to put that into perspective, other COD games would normally give you a kick reduction between 10 and 30% when using the foregrip. Now, there were other attachments in Black Ops 2 that reduced recoil, the ACOG sight, the EO tech sight, and those would actually stack with the foregrip, but the grip on its own 
It was so minimal of a buff, you likely didn't even notice it. You may have thought you did, but the actual in-game effects were almost too small for most people to feel a difference. So, I'm sorry if I destroyed all your Black Ops 2 memories, but if you were using the grip, you were wasting an attachment slot. And at number one today, the biggest no-use uh, attachment in COD history has to be the burst in Modern Warfare 2019. Burst fire weapons are satisfying to use, we all know that, and a lot of players love them for the encouraged precision and quick time to kill. Now, the select fire attachment has existed for quite some time in COD history. I think it started in Black Ops 2, but the 2019 burst weapon, or weapon perk, it got a lot of hate from the community for being a literal nerf to the weapon you attached it to. It was available on most of the ARs and a couple of SMGs for some reason, I don't know. It would allow you to toggle your gun from full auto to three round burst. However, it did not adjust the damage or the range accordingly. And since most of the guns in the game took more than three bullets to kill beyond mid range, the burst attachment was a nerf. Burst fire guns are made for precision. They're made for quick kills. But if you're using a gun like the Graw or the M13, weapons that required more than three bullets to kill, all the burst attachment did was make the weapon way harder to use at range. A lot of people were actually annoyed at this when the game came out, and honestly, I get it. What's the point of adding burst fire capability to weapons that can't kill with one burst? Why would anybody do that? Has to be the single least used attachment in all of Modern Warfare 2019, and I'm willing to bet some of you even forgot it was there. And there you have it. Those are some of the most useless attachments in COD history. Let me know one that was deserving of being on this list. Make sure you get over to Chaos Comics on Twitter, give it a follow. We're giving away that PS5 at 30,000 followers. And I'll see you soon.